greetings, greetings, greetings. So, I just got a tooth extracted. So, my voice is not going to come through as strong as it normally does because I can't open my mouth but so far. And this is my cat's toy here. He put this here. I don't believe that thing. <laughs> so, I'm here today to bring you the soul. This is called a hybrid uh, solar eclipse. Um, but it also is the new moon in Taurus. Today is 420. Um, so don't get too caught up in the clouds, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, the new moon in Taurus speaks to prosperity lies ahead. But this is after our solar eclipse uh, that we are experiencing, right? So we just came up out of the, um, what I would say, this free energy of Aries, that fast moving fire energy. And now with this Mercury and retrograde that we're about to experience as well, we're going to feel a little bit like a whole lot slowed down, right? We're going to feel like we're all tied up. And we have a lack of motion or a sense of personal freedom because we were coming on the heels of experiencing a sense of personal freedom, of being able to move forward with our ideas and our goals and our missions, um, that new energy that came through. It's still here, but we're, now we're going to get slowed down a bit so we can go back and look at what we've done, refine it and readjust it right and it takes time to do that also i feel like this card is telling us um to look at some of like where our planets are in the sky right it's going to give us time to see what's going on up there so that we can make some better decisions about our lives so i'm just going to read a little bit of this it says this woman shows this card shows a woman tied up with vines around her wrist body and arms Receiving this card upright represents a situation in your life where things seem to be severely stuck, right? You can't move. There could be some drama going on, some technicalities. Um, things that you thought were coming through really quickly are slowing down now. And it's for a reason or a purpose. Don't get frustrated too much about it. Just breathe through it <laughs> and take your time. And pretty soon... The Mercury in retrograde will lift, right? The solar eclipse is going to come through to shine light on whatever that situation is. Okay, even though it's a, what did they say? The moon is passing in front of the sun, I believe. So we got to slow down a bit and wait for the moon to get through or pass that sun energy so that we can go start to move forward again. I was meditating in the grass the other day, and um, I was, you know, just listening to some some frequency, some high frequency vibrational um, 453 hertz, and I saw something waving in the wind across from me in the grass. I normally um, meditate on the National Mall area because I live in D.C., and I was like, God, somebody littered. But I wasn't really certain. I kept saying well, it kind of looks like a feather too, but I wasn't certain, right? Um, and lo and behold, when I finished my meditation, I just walked over to it and this is what I found. <laughs> it was a white feather. And just before that, the week before that, I found this. This was just sitting on my desk. <laughs> so those type of magical things happen. And when they, you know, sometimes you might feel like you're not moving. But then you get a confirmation from your ancestors that everything is okay. Or your higher aspect. That everything's okay. You just need to slow down a bit to see this. I wouldn't have seen it otherwise if I hadn't slowed down. So, very important to remember these things. So, when, you know, I put the, I placed these here. And this card popped up. And I love the Guardian Angel card. This is from our Angels and Ancestors um, deck. And I wanted to pull this because... I know that Chiron energy is very prominent right now. And sometimes, you know, we have to go. So that all tied up is also about going back to our childhood and healing the, the energy or the feelings or emotions that we had from that. 
And as, as long as we remember that our ancestors are with us, our guardian angels, our higher aspects are with us. Right here, you have the sun, you have the moon, and you have the all-seeing creator, or you, right? <laughs> so, they're all here with us. We're never alone, especially as we're going to be getting these feelings of feeling tied up or like we can't move or we stuck. We got to remember there's a reason for it, and our ancestors are here with us. Um, so this is just really a reminder about our guides and the fact that they are here. It says it shows the white feather that has become known as the guardian angel's business card. <laughs> Whenever a white feather appears in your life, or this card appears in a reading, it's a message to say that your guardian angel and ancestor guides are particularly close at this time and are there to support you with their love. If you have asked for help with a particular situation, know that there is a divine intervention in the works. And that is so true. Because I've had divine interventions through numbers, you know, synchronicity of numbers, through readings, through um, just picking up my phone um, this past week. And um, my sister friend, Shaman Destiny Raven, uh, she was playing a throat chakra a singing bowl and I had just literally did that with this bowl the same day and then I opened up my phone and the first video pop up is hers and I said this is divine <laughs> and it's beautiful I'm gonna I'm I'm try to post it um, in the description below so please check the description below for more information about our planetary astrology as well as um, a couple of her videos that I found very healing and supportive this week. Um, so remember that they're with us. So um, I also went to our um, tarot, our Akashic tarot deck, and two cards popped out. The first one was the bird's nest. Notice this is another feather <laughs> card. And then the lightning bolt. And I like how green is showing up a lot in these cards too, to represent uh, the earth energy of Taurus, right? So let's see what the bird nest says first, and then we'll move on to the lightning bolt. But when I look at this, I think of birth, rebirth, nurturing, right? Renewal, spring, um, a nest representing that tied up energy also. But the tied up energy doesn't have to represent um, being restricted. It can also represent shelter, protection a reason for keeping you from moving forward because because we're trying to build a foundation under you a strong foundation before you move forward with any plans or goals so this one is a strong sturdy nest cradles a new family of birds as the bird as the babies are being fed i also like this because the intricacy of this can represent relationships right the need to release relationships but also to build strong relationships i like the way um, i'm teaching a class this week um, about neurons in our body in our brains and the dendrites and the dendrites and it also can represent the the, the intricacies of relationships and family and friends and making sure that we're feeding that and nurturing that in a strong way and getting fed in return that way as well. So, you know, um, and that's just the intuitive way I look at this. Um, so, you, this says also that new additions could be coming your way, like children, or you could be renovating, renovating your home or hiring new employees or opening up new business locations. But we're always being asked to take our time with any of those things, right? So this represents this card represents a lot of things. It has a lot going on here. You can also uh, be perched up high to look down low at some things to see it in greater detail, right? So, and but the childhood energy. Is also playing a role because we do have Chiron here as well. So we have that new moon 
and Taurus coming up, but we have that sun, the, the, also the, the moon energy of Aries as well. So, let's make sure we're taking care of ourselves, right? And that's the Aries energy, that individual looking at yourself within, and then also the outside of ourselves with the new moon right on the heels of this solar eclipse that we're experiencing. Um, so next came out, so these are force cards, um, and the next one that popped out right next to it was the eight of forces. Very interesting. It has this lightning bolt, and it's actually, um, splitting the tree. It's coming, and I've seen this as, like, kind of like kundalini energy a little bit, too, because, like, that light that we're always asked to pull in from our crown chakra down to our root chakra and then back up again that's how i look at this card and this energy this um illuminates the night sky striking a tree down to its core right so that new energy coming through once again right to give us strength to, to um, light up our chakras right um puddles of rain pool upon the ground this card shows that it's a time of splitting apart a time of loss, disappointment, or metaphorical death, right? So, in this, you might feel like sad or confused or don't know which way to go about a friendship or relationship or family um, or friends. But remember, your guardian angels are there, right? You're being fed. So, you have nothing to worry about when it comes to loss. Everything might seem really sudden or unexpected, right? That's the energy of Pluto. Pluto is an Aquarius. And when Pluto is an Aquarius, it's going to expand you into new things, period. It might feel a little pushy or bossy, <laughs> but it's not. Pluto in Aquarius is one of the best places that Pluto can be. Because Aquarius is going to bring you some intuitive energy right? It's going to force you into a situation or a way that you should go with Pluto in it. So pay attention to that. Accept the situation. Don't fight it. Move forward in that energy, right? Clear your chakras. Balance them out, okay? Because that lightning bolt that's coming through, that's definitely Pluto coming through to shake things up. And you got to listen because if you don't, you're going to be wallowing in misery. Okay, and you don't want to do that. You want to move forward to that new, that newness that comes along with this fire and earth energy, which is like volcanic energy in a sense. To me, that's what I keep saying. It's energy of volcanoes, in in a, well, yeah, volcanoes in a ring of fire, which is the moon moving across the sun. Really, when you think about it, right? Because it's going to show this moon in front and the sun is going to ring it. So, yeah, it's volcanic. It's eruptions, right? <laughs> and then the slow moving lava, right? That creates new earth, new energy. So, I think it's very important to pay attention to that energy that's coming through. That was a little intuitive. <laughs> So we have the wisdom card coming through. So I'm going to give you some wisdom for this um, this solar eclipse. Um, deeper knowing. Definitely Pluto in Aquarius energy as well. It's intuitive. It's listening to the oracle within. It's having empathy and hypersensitivity. Intuition is the faculty that allows you to center into a dialogue with source. The consciousness that you are a part of but cannot see with the naked eye. Okay. You can be given information that don't make no sense at all, but your soul knows. That's the deeper knowing. Your soul knows. So when you're being guided a certain way, know that your soul got your back. Your ancestors got your back. Your higher consciousness, right? That That's the source that has your back, okay? Um, the connections of those neurons in your brain the dendrites they look like little um 
what I what could I say? Roots of trees, branches of a tree. They're all connected. And they have a knowing of where to go, the impulses within they, they actually control the impulses within your body. So it tells your body what to do. That's the thing, the big thing that controls our thoughts. And thoughts become reality. So that deeper knowing, that intuitive knowing is very important during this time. Um, I'm going to drop some more information about these cards in the chat, but I just want to get through the reading. So adversity came out for our soul's journey lesson here. I accept that challenges are the best way to learn. And I think, you know, some people, they say, um, judge not or watch how you say things. They're very afraid to make mistakes in life because it, it could be kind of painful. But without making mistakes in life, how do you grow? If you're, if you're not challenged or wrong sometimes or incorrect or inappropriate sometimes, how do you learn from that mistake? You have to face adversity in order to get to the good part. So they're really lessons. They're blessings. When you, when you conquer adversity, that's when your blessing comes, right? That's when you know when the next challenge arises, how to get over it, how to deal with it. So adversity is very important. Um, it says adversity is an opportunity for you to reach out to your soul family. You are not alone in this time of challenge. If you need help, others are waiting to offer assistance all the time. So you're never alone because they're there. Your guardian angels, your, your spirit guides, your ancestors, your um, angels, they're all there to help you. So when you feel like you're in a time of adversity, don't worry. They're there. Step into the energy of being humble enough to ask for it. Make mistakes and ask for help. Ask for guidance. Ask for clarity in those situations. This is a great reading. I love the solar eclipse energy. They say they're going to be with us. What do they say? From the next, from now to the next six months or so. Not only that, but we have Mercury in retrograde that's going to be with us up until about May 4th. So what better time to um, go back in your energies, your, your childhood energies. Um, I had a sister friend call me yesterday. We've been knowing each other for over 40 years. And then she hooked me up and connected me up. She did a FaceTime, so she connected me up with our friend, some other friends we grew up with, on the same block. They're still there. So I said, listen, in a couple of months, and if, you know, let's not let it be too long that we get up, we get together, maybe have a cookout right there on the sidewalk in that block that we played on. And I know by doing that, it's going to help me heal some of my Chiron energy, my childhood energy, some of the thoughts I had, emotions I had that I brought forth into my adult life. Um, it's going to help me heal some of that. And I'm excited about it. Um, so I'm going to come back with the new moon and Taurus energy. This is like, that's why I call it hybrid energy too. Because it's not only about um, the solar eclipse that's being eclipsed by the moon energy, this Aries energy, this fire energy. But also it's about earth energy, our Taurus energy. So I think it's very important to look at that, um, that grounding energy, um, being connected, right? So um, my son is an Aries, and he's a very fiery warrior energy, but he also knows how to be grounded because he's got his brother who's a Capricorn, <laughs> and he's a goat, so I got a ram and a goat, right? And they balance each other out very well when it comes down to energetics. So um, I think it's time, you know, to look at that balance of this lightning bolt coming down, this tree, right? And then rising back up because that's what it does. It grounds. It, you have to ground yourself when this type of energy is happening. And grounding to me is balancing that chakra, those chakras within us and above us and below us. So um, happy solar eclipse. We're experiencing it now. Um, what did it say? 419 to 420. I'll drop some um, nuggets of wisdom in the description below. Please take time to read it. Um, and look for the links from my two beautiful um, 
my astrological reader, Molly McCord, and also my beautiful sister friend, Shaman Destiny, who has been just overflowing with videos of healing our throat chakras, our um, and then giving us messages about the solar eclipse as well. So take time to do what makes your soul happy. Visit my website, happylightbeam.com for more healing modalities as well as events. Um, I am also have a Buddha collection that I started. So um, I would love if you go on and purchase some of my Buddhas um, and my paintings. Um, I think that's about it for now. I'll be back with this new moon in Taurus energy, but I kind of just wanted to focus on our solar eclipse in Aries, our hybrid, um, you know, moon energy in Aries right now for the solar eclipse. So enjoy the rest of your day or night. Be happy, be light, be love. Namaste. Me feel you.